Hey, everybody, and welcome to another installment, yet another edition of Work Your Career Wednesday. As always, I'm Bradley Clark. So thrilled, honored, and blessed that you decided to tune in and join us today. And I have an incredible guest today. I am so excited for you to meet. Um, did you hear that? Was that my dog? Did you hear my dog in the background? She decided to no. make herself known. Oh, this I love is it. fantastic. Absolutely. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead and bark, Shelby. That's great. But uh, <laughs> Kristen, before we before we get started, is it okay if we pay some bills real quick? Yes, absolutely. Is that all right? And I and I gotta I gotta get your input on this. Let me tell you, if you need anything, everything, and uh, I tend to repeat anything, so come up with another word for that. Anything, <laughs> everything uh, pertaining to video podcasts. You got uh, a music video. You have any anything a commercial like we're doing right now. You got to get a hold of Stephen Saldana at White Husky Films. The number is on the screen, and uh, if you're listening, just go to www.whitehuskyfilms.com. Dream, create, record in that order, and when you choose White Husky, oh, now for your audio books, you'll be so glad you did. And we got it. I, I got to tell you, we are so honored, still honored uh, to have Jane's Physical Therapy as one of our sponsors. My goodness, we are still hiring. And I'm actually helping on this. As you guys know, we're looking for um, four, uh, three PTs, a physical therapist and a physical therapy assistants in the New Orleans area. Get in contact with us. All right. Connect with us on LinkedIn. That's Jane's J-A-Y-N-E-S physical therapy or getting just send us a message send us uh go, go to our website janes j-a-y-n-e-s pt.com amazing organization incredible chance to really do uh some great work in home care and um my goodness it's been such a blessing to be able to recruit for them and and just get the word out about them so i tell you kristen i'm i'm seriously thinking of moving to new orleans to uh for this take... physical therapy company absolutely absolutely wow what they, a they, statement i love so it i'm telling you they well because you know I was, i've been in um some car accidents and when i you yes. know was performing i was a very lively show I was jumping <laughs> I'd have to ice my back in the back. Well, so what they do is uh, if you have a surgery or, if, you know, if you're homebound or whatever, um, you know, have your doctor refer and uh, they will come to your house and do the physical wow. therapy at your house. And it's absolutely fantastic. And the people that we've been talking to, you know, we've had, we got some starts going and we're still growing. This guy has been in business about 10 years and now he is just expanding and uh it's it's amazing so go to janespt.com to learn more about it and to connect with us my goodness i have such a great show today you're gonna be so <laughs> blessed by this oh my gosh let me tell you about Kristen appel she is vice president of sales and marketing at jersey mike's uh, she's also a franchise owner. She owns her own stores. She is on it. She's a weary traveler on planes from Idaho to California. Uh, she's does, she's not just serving up delicious sandwiches, but also uh, she is a community leader. And we're going to get more into that. But I I got to tell you, um, I, one of the other reasons that I'm I'm so excited and I'm so proud of her is she is my she well okay she's she's my cousin yes. but she's my niece you know what i'm saying like yeah, cousin you know, niece. that's the way cousin niece cousin mm -hmm. niece mm -hmm. <laughs> we're gonna smash the words together <laughs> everybody please make welcome the incredible kristen appel welcome to the show kristen well, I want to sign up to be on the show every day because an intro like that just makes makes the day way better. So if you could intro me every morning like that, I would be very appreciative. <laughs> I tell you what, you won't even have to go through my agent. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> 
please. Everybody, please make <laughs> welcome Kristen Appel. I love it. I love it. Well, I'm so excited to be here today. Um, it's just, it's been really, really neat hearing about this fabulous podcast and just like your mission and what you're doing. And I'm honored to be a part. And um, my heart and my prayer is that, you know, things that we discuss today will will touch others and encourage others. I, and I really fully believe it will. I mean, you, what you're doing at Jersey Mike's is, you know, it's, it's so much more than, uh, you know, than what you guys do. Um, I mean, really, Jersey Mike's has, has the best sandwiches i'm sorry you guys blow everybody else out of the water i really do there was a there's a store um i used to work in webster and i think okay. there's a store there and and i used to go there. I was like i wonder i wonder if Kristen would come to houston that'd be great that'd be wonderful but uh but you know you're so wonderful and uh i'm just so proud of you i i i i, I mean i am so proud of you put it this way i was talking to erica about this last night i was like you know i remember holding her she had just gotten back from the hospital and <laughs> she's just so little and I, I said gosh i was in that i was in the uh was i in eighth grade i think i was in eighth grade yeah, you must have been young back when yeah we just were well, not that far apart we we i remember we took a picture with uh with debbie and either oh she was holding you and i had a desert storm t-shirt on to, <laughs> to commemorate <laughs> the era that you were born in that's so great so, i love it and so, so i'm just so proud of you and um i can't thank you enough for for coming on the show um let well let's get started i know your story yeah. the <laughs> the audience does not please tell us about you well, it started decades ago. No, I won't go back. I won't go back that far. But um, I, was, I was born. I lived. <laughs> it was the yes. best of times. It was the worst of times. The worst of times. <laughs> no, so I, uh, I mean, I, I will say I grew up in just the best family environment, as as you know, the most loving community and, and, and grandparents and aunts and uncles and my sweet sister and, you know, growing up in the East Bay, I think was a big blessing back in back in the day and, you know, just had such great opportunities to connect with with good people and good mentors uh, growing up. And I felt really strongly that I wanted to attend college and just kind of prayed through that journey, um, visited a lot of different places and, and finalized uh, Biola University over there uh, in La Mirada. In Southern California. And that was hard. I was so close to my family to separate out like that, even though it's only like an hour plane ride. It's still, you know, some distance there. But I really just, I don't know, I think I started to really come into my own at that point. And, you know, not only make my faith my own at that point, but really decide, you know, what, what do I want the next, you know, decade or more to look like? You know, what, what do I want to get into? And I, I actually originally was looking into psychology. I uh, just love like the inner workings of how people communicate, operate and think. And I'm telling you, it was so, it was so interesting because my original track was not like business or in business marketing, but I just remember having a couple intro classes and going, no, I think, I think I'm interested in this, this business side. And so I changed my major, went into business and then um, our, class was the first to have a hybrid option of marketing and management because I originally felt strongly I'd go into the management side and was already in the restaurant industry at that point and just thought I, that'd be my natural trajectory. And then I fell in love with the marketing side and and um, just like the, the different ways that you can utilize, you know, campaigns and, and, and different, you know, also relationships too to um, help build a brand. And I found that really intriguing. I had a lot of amazing professors on the marketing side. And I said, okay, that's the stamp I want to go with. And I jumped into, you know, a marketing position right as I got out of college. Um, it was a great opportunity. I learned a lot. It was in the tech industry. Um, and while, you know, I gained a lot there, I just didn't have a passion for for that side. Um and I love food. So <laughs> it was a natural progression. 
you know, I, I took that time and I took what I learned there at that in the tech company. And then at that point I was kind of transitioning in life. I was kind of debating, okay, do I want to go back to uh, Northern California where my family is? Cause we've always been so bonded or okay. do I want to continue growth, you know, and establishing kind of my own roots out in Southern California. Um, and at that point I was dating my now husband and we just decided like, no, this is, this is a great route to stay in Southern California. And I um, was lucky to have met many of the franchise owners early on. That was now what, almost like probably that was 12, 12 and a half years ago that I was getting introduced to, to franchisees of Jersey Mike's through my husband he uh, started out as an operator and um, for a for a long time ran about 14 locations. Um, and I fell in love with just the franchisees. I fell in love with the mission of what they were trying to do. It wasn't just about like turning another dollar. It was about really setting your roots into a community and seeing how you could um, create change, like positive change where you're planted. So I just jumped right in with them. Actually, it was, I had originally thought, you know, my heart had been, okay, corporate America, corporate America. Like you go to college and you think, okay, flashy, big corporate, you know, marketing gig right out, right out the gate. And what ended up happening is I fell in love with, I fell in love with the people. I fell in love with th this ownership group that I was invited in. And I think what kind of kept me challenged is just like the growth that we experienced um, you know, we started out, you know, just figuring out, okay, we've got a couple store locations here and how do we scale this to become so much bigger? And I can say fast forward in that 11 years, um, we have grown from three to four locations to 20, um, and we've diversified out into the pizza industry as well. And it's been a total trip and so exciting. There's just, I like I like, how do I explain it? I like consistency. You know, one of the reasons I think I've stayed with the company so long, I've liked the consistency, but there's always been a challenge of, okay, here's a new piece of growth. Here's a new piece of growth. And so it's kept my interest, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been fun just to, just to, to be a part of that scaling. And then in addition, uh, it's been an honor for my husband and I to become franchisees of our own. You know, we, we both grew up in amazing families and they set us up for success. So I'll always give thanks to both of our, our families for that. Um, but I think when it comes to the financial side, you know, it's not like we were, you know, gifted this big sum of money to go, okay, go figure out what you want to do. Both my husband and I said, we want, we want to enjoy our twenties, of course, but we want to put our nose to the grind so that hopefully in our later years, you know, we can, we can have built something where we can sit back and enjoy more at that point. So we really, really worked hard through those twenties um, and, you know, built up enough and had created such great relationships within the franchise system that we were offered the opportunity to purchase our own stores. So that's been a big blessing for my husband and I to, to separately to be franchisees. Um, and then within the group that I started with, you know, to, to not only be able to head up the sales and marketing and, and, you know, brand growth for our group, but then I was also offered the opportunity to buy in as an owner, you know, for, for the locations that we have in our group. And so, you know, I look back right now and it's kind of like a pinch me moment. I'm in my thirties and I've oh, worked gosh. really hard to get, I know you don't want to hear that, right? Yeah. We, I mean, you thanks. Haven't aged. No, you haven't aged. Just me. It's just me. Don't worry. No, you I, the, didn't the, age. The, the, the ice is encroaching on the land. Yeah. Oh, I can't not <laughs> Hey, it's a good look. It's like a George Clooney look. You should go with it. <laughs> um, <laughs> don't turn too red. You're turning red. I'm turning red. I'm here okay. for it. Thank you. Thank you. That You're happened. Welcome. That happened. So I just, you know, kind of circling back on, I just, it's a pinch me moment to kind of be in the position. Um, that I'm in and I just, I'm very humbled and yeah. I try to take, take everything I've learned. I don't know, to kind of help me propel into the next decade. And then also trying to figure out ways to encourage and inspire those, you know, around me, um, you know, and, and those, and, and our employees within our organizations. 
I love that. When you were in school, you correct me if I'm wrong, but you worked for a fairly large brand um, inside the restaurant industry. Yes. Um, I and did. What, what would be, what would be considered, you know, a higher end was are they, do they franchise? I don't, you know what? I do not know if they franchise. I'm not, but, I'm not sure. I don't think they have. No, and what did you do there? Yeah. So I was on, I, I was cheesecake factory. Um, for, I didn't you know, know if we want to mention I feel like it. every, I didn't know if we were going to mention it, but, um, I feel like everyone's been to a cheesecake factory. I guess maybe not. There's like it's, so many pages. They have amazing. I'm sorry, but their cheesecake is fantastic. I it's mean, it, so it, it good. really is. It's it really so good. is. Now, but, memorizing so, the whole menu was pretty intense, but. Well, okay. So, so what did you do there? So I actually, so I was working there through college just to help yeah. support and, and pay bills. So I was on the serving, the serving side for uh, right. why well, I, I started like hostessing and moved up. And then I was in communications with the management team to move into management. So that's right. where I originally had, had thought I was going to go is, is go up that the restaurant chain. And I loved all of the managers and just the leadership that I worked with. And, and I worked at a couple different of their restaurants because I would uh, travel between college and, and visiting home and working near the East, at the East Bay uh, Cheesecake Factory, one of those locations. And I really thought that was what I was going to do. And then it just kind of came down to the point where I said, you know, I don't really, I don't think this is what I want to do. I, you know, yeah. they had crazy hours, which, hey, go them. They enjoyed it. It was a big family. But I said, I think I want to go just a little bit of a different route. And yeah. I miss that restaurant industry still. I still kind of wonder what some days I'm like, oh, it would have been, you know, fun to to be in the leadership well, and be in the grand opening family. But in a way, I'm still yeah. doing the restaurant side of things now. I mean, I'm still in that segment, but right. in a way that I, that I love even more. So it worked well, out. Well, my question is, is how important was that to, you know, sort of understand um, not just the business, but, you know, what wait staff, you know, go through, you know, yeah. what they, you know, it's, I, I tell you what, you, you, if you're not nice to the wait staff, <laughs> just leave. I'm I'm sorry. There there is a possibility some DNA will be in that burger. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't want that. It's true. It's true. I'm you just know saying. It's, <laughs> it's it is yeah. Oh man, there are but, but, so but many how, stories. But how important is that to to mm -hmm. sort of understand that? And and I know back then you didn't quite know what the trajectory would be. Now right. I think right. one thing about our one one thing about our family that is remarkable is, you know, we're very competitive mm -hmm. um, and we're very, you know, go get it. You know, there it is, go get it, right? And however you're going to do it, go get it. I mean, you know, your parents, two of the, my most favorite people in the world, mm -hmm. both Emmy winners, um, you know, you, you had this sort of, um, you know, this is what it's going to take to become successful. And, you know, when you're in school, that's the time to learn a lot of these things. How is that experience? The reason I'm asking is that a lot of times when, you know, people have a different trajectory, it's like, mm -hmm. oh, oh, you're out of college. Here's a store. You know what I'm saying? And that wasn't your path. Your path was you you earned it every, yeah. every single every single bit of the way. And so how important was that to being able to relate and understand where people are today? I think that's a great question. And I think there's a couple of different layers to that. But I mean, first being, I think I, I was able to experience firsthand, you know, being in that restaurant system, like, you know, even even something as, as I, I talk about this with um, the senior operator a lot in our, in our group and, you know, the difference between customer service and hospitality and figuring out, you know, you know, that offering of making someone feel like they're coming into your home versus just a much appreciated or thank you versus a, I'm so glad you're here. Welcome back. Do you want your usual, you know, we're going to add dessert to that, you know, can't wait till you come back. So there was that touch of how do we, how do I take what I've learned on that side um, and bring that over to this group of, you know, pushing the boundaries more on the hospitality side, 
so that, you know, you, there's, there's hundreds of different competitive food brands and then, and also sandwich brands and figuring out that way to really elevate our franchise group specifically to eat, to even set them apart from maybe other franchise groups and other territories that no, this is the one I want to come. They treat me as if I'm part of their family. So I think that that was a really great piece I was able to take uh, over. And then secondly, too, I think also understanding just the, 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 the person that, you know, comes in and applies for, you know, in the restaurant industry, you know, what, what are their goals? What are their aspirations? And to have worked alongside so many incredible people and to see their hustle, you know, and, you know, some are working three jobs, some are working two jobs while being a single mom or a single dad. And some have, have been in college, some haven't been to college and some have had extremely devastating life circumstances or, or just raised in, in, in really sad environments. So it's, there's so many different people and so many different walks of life, um, that like you, you encounter through these people that come in and, and are looking for jobs. And I think early on in the restaurant industry, I I connected that there's so many different, different types of people coming in, but they had the same person to give this ex the same purpose to give this excellent service. And that's what we do. It's like you come from all different backgrounds, some broken, some not, but we come here to heal together. We leave, you know, whatever pain at the door. And we just come in here to to make subs and bring joy or, you know, for the pizza. We're coming here to make pizza and bring joy. And I think it's been really the, the part of my heart that's been most inspired is being able to come in and offer you know, advice, almost like some, just like a a safe place for people that, that have come into our doors. So important. It's so important. And, and the fact is, I think that part of, uh, you know, leadership isn't stressed. It's something that you have to experience in order to get, you know what I mean? And so, um, I, and I just love that. I love that and how that plays into, you know, how you're really developing and, and getting into the communities that you're in, you know, you're, you're in the, at the end of the day, you're not just making subs, you're changing lives. Exactly. Exactly. And that sounds, yeah, yeah. I, I, it, it blows my mind. It really blows my mind to think about, okay, I just was like, yeah, I'm going to get into the sandwich, you know, industry for uh, back in the day. I was like, oh, I'll probably be here for a year or so and move on. But to see what we've built, like as a group, I mean, it's crazy. You know, we have these, you know, 20 locations. It's a multi million dollar company now. And I just go, it's like a pinch me moment. It's so, it's such a pinch me moment. And the, and the, and the people that I work alongside in the lead, the ownership group, like we just have the most amazing ownership group and they're always thinking, how do I serve? How do I serve? And I think so that's always been, I've always been that way in my heart. I always wanted, you have, I, you know, I, 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 yeah. I, you know, right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's uh, when you can, when you can tie, um, empathy with profit yep. really i put this uh instagram or tick whatever they're called on social media and i've always said you know and this was to the teams i've led too it's like listen people may remember your words they may not but they will always remember how you made them feel absolutely if you want people to keep coming back like like what you guys are fostering uh make them how how do they feel when they come in there and get that sub i guarantee you if it feels like home the sub will taste 10 times better Mm -hmm. the cheesecake will taste 10 times better it was Mm -hmm. you know what i mean it doesn't matter and when it when there's that feeling you know you ever watch you watch those cooking shows right yeah oh yeah And you, you have these, you know, these chefs or aspiring chefs to go in and, and they're making, they're making something and they all have the same ingredient, 
but then what you know when it's like a blind test it's like oh wow you really made that with love or you know what i'm saying it's the same stuff how do they yeah. know how uh -huh. they made it uh -huh. there's something about that energy that goes mm -hmm. into the the food mm -hmm. the product mm -hmm. that uh you know you just can't you just can't duplicate you just can't duplicate yeah. absolutely Kristen, stay right there. We're going to take a break. Um, we come back. We got more to talk about. I'm just, man, I'm, I'm so proud. I, I just am. Sorry. It's just the way it is. <laughs> stay tuned. We're going to have more with Kristen and Pell right after this. Jane's Physical Therapy has immediate openings for full-time and part-time positions. For home health care physical therapists and physical therapy assistants, we are actively looking in the New Orleans and Lafayette areas. Call Bradley Clark at 713-364-8777. Join us at Jane's Physical Therapy, and let's help Louisiana get back to living life. Hey everybody, welcome back. Oh my gosh, we're having a wonderful conversation with Kristen Appel, Vice President of Sales and Marketing at Jersey Mike's franchise owner. So cool, so cool. Kristen, how how important is it, or do you even think about? Because it, you've, you've always been this way. You've always been the empathetic ear. You've always been, you know, but you don't offer, it's not sympathy. It's empathy. There's a difference. It's a big difference, you know, and I think that's a trait that runs through our, our, our line is yes. that, you know what I mean? There's a difference. We can be in, but no, and I'm good with the sympathy. Don't know. And we don't offer it, you know? Um, but how do you even think about this? Most people that have your dedication and that have your attitude toward business and leadership um, you know, I, you know, management leadership are completely different things. Mm -hmm. How do you, do you take into account the, the people that you're influencing? Like, do you know, or do you, does it even cross your mind or is it just something you do where you are an absolute inspiration for not just young women? And not just young people, but people. Does that make sense? Yeah. Ooh, that hit. Um, I think, man, I, I definitely am honored. Um, and I think about it often, actually, because I think it's a it's a pretty big weight. Uh, when it, it's so interesting too, because I, I've always naturally wanted to lead or you know, be at the front of the charge, so to speak. That's always just been my heart, yeah. but I've never wanted to force my way in, if that makes sense, you know, or, or say, because I have a position of leadership, you have to do A, B, and C. Right. I think that I have just, my biggest piece, I guess I would say is, is a takeaway is discipline. I've just always been really disciplined. You know, there's been seasons, really, really tough seasons in my life, um, you know, relationally, emotionally. And I always committed to stay disciplined and stay the course. You know, there's some days I would wake up and just feel like I just want to get back in bed. Like I think everybody has those days. And I committed long before I felt that feeling to go, I'm going to do the action anyway. You know, mm. so like, you know, do the action scared, do the action upset, do the action discouraged, do the action when you're happy. It's like whatever feeling comes up, it's not going to negate the steps I know make me better. And so that, I mean, I, I follow that on the personal side, you know, with health and fitness, but really on the career side too, of like, you know, these are my steps for success. And I do not do you get derailed from those no matter what comes my way. And I think that that's kind of just naturally led me into the progression of growth that I've found. And so then when you ask the question of like, do you think about the people, you know, around you that you influence? And absolutely I do. It's, it's a heavy, I don't want to sound cliche. It's not a burden. It's just, there's a lot of weight there of how I am that I want to be walking the walk um, mm -hmm. not just talking the talk, I think yeah. is really big. And when people 
when people, you know, that maybe are looking up to me are saying, you know, I'm going through a really tough time. How do I handle this? How do I navigate it? My favorite thing is being able to, you know, grab onto their hand and say, oh, I've been through tough things too. I get it. And this, this is how I got through it. And these are the steps that, you know, I stayed consistent in kind of to weather the storm. And, you know, an, a, a big piece in that too, I think is, is me sticking to my consistency shows other people. Yeah, no, it can be done. Like you can go through, you know, hard things, but you can still show up to your job. You know, you can, right. you know, you can be in a rough season and you can still give 150%. And I think that's how I've always been too. No matter what my, I am in a job where I'm going to give 150% because at the end of the day, it's like my name is getting, is, is, is on everything. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give no matter what. And right. so with those around me, I really do encourage them to show up no matter what, no matter what is trying to pull you down basically. And in addition to that, I think another piece is when you're in a position of leadership and people are watching what you do, I think for me, it's always been about integrity. So, I mean, there is definitely things that I could do to cut corners or to build sales for our, for our franchise group, you know, that wouldn't necessarily be, I don't know, I guess you, you wouldn't even, it wouldn't be illegal, but it wouldn't morally be the right, um, the right path. And I never will compromise my integrity to build sales, to build a brand, to, to do anything. I'm not, I'm not going to compromise that integrity. And so I hope that those that are, you know, watching around me, they see that too, because you can't get into a spot of growth and leadership where you're just going to compromise for whatever, if that's the next dollar. And I just think that that in the end really cuts your character down more than anything else. So, yeah. Well, it cuts your character down, but it, it, it brings down the, presentation of the brand it brings down the quality that mm -hmm. you produce and it's, it's i mean one cut corner can derail everything you know and it, it, it there's it, people people don't realize that you know you have you take years years of just backbreaking work and stress and all of that and it's one bad decision away from it all crumbling and so having that integrity, absolutely, you know what I mean? So, so you're talking about, you know, you have a list of things that, that you don't compromise on. Is it a long list? Did you, are we back? You know, it's not we go. <laughs> that long of a list. Yeah. Right. Can you hear me? Okay, I, I got good? you. I got you now. I got you now. What, what are, what are some of the key? Well, what are, what, what's your list? Okay. Well, I think I would say on the health side, pretty simple in that I committed about, oh gosh, it's been now it's been about nine years where I get, you know, a minimum of three days of exercise, you know, a week, usually four to five, but that's my minimum. And I've been able to stick to that now for about eight years. And something as simple as just like that movement, but, but it's, you know, help my body as I'm aging, it clears my mind. And there's been so many times where things have come up where I go, Ooh, I don't want to stick to that. Like, you know, intense workout. And I do have a great trainer. So I've been following mainly my, my, my trainer's workouts for about that seven or eight years. And some of them can get pretty intense and I just only affecting me at the end of the day. So something like yeah. that, um, about, about nine months ago, just, just for some different reasons and, and things I was praying through, I gave up caffeine. That was really difficult at first, but I, you know, I, a, a I practice for myself is, you have, that's okay. See now this is my mornings. Lovely oh, I love water. It. No, that's, that's um, yeah. I still, I, I still do decaf coffee, but I think one of my, my list things would be commit to something long enough for it to form as a habit. And then if, yeah, you know, after that time where you've committed, which it's 60 days to form a habit, 
So I try to commit to something for 60 days. And then if I'm still like, this isn't my thing, you know, maybe I'll give it an extra 30 or maybe I'll go, okay, I'm not going to, I won't continue on, but I give it that 60 days to form the habit and then see where things go. And so, with, no. with that, you're, you're starting to break up on us a little, you're, hold on. You're starting to break up on us a little I've bit. been able to stick to so many more things that I ever thought I could. Kristen, we're having a little Let technology glitch. Are you technology glitch? Yeah, it's it's you're going in and Let out. Let me see. Hmm. Hmm. It's what happens. I'm not that technically savvy. Oh, well, it I'm, is what I, happens. I'm not either. Is it I'm any either. better yet, or am I still going in and out? No, you're no, you're good. You're good to go now. You're good to go now. Okay. So, well, we'll see. We will me. see if it gets we bad will again. See. It, you know. Okay. Lord, just make the Wi-Fi consistent. Yes. Jesus. Yes, consistent, so, please. <laughs> so, 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 so that's huge, especially you know, especially when you're in leadership, or well, really in anything. You know, you, there, there's different ways that you have to alleviate stress. There's, you know, what I mean, and, mm -hmm. and a lot of those what you listed is absolutely fantastic. As far as leadership goes, you were saying that, you know, you're disciplined, you, you know, you're consistent. Does the, the, the list is not long, really, I would say for anybody. No, no, but it's not. For, for no. your, in terms of leadership, you were, you were mentioning you have a list. You have, a, I would say a list of non-negotiables. Mm -hmm. Is it just two? Mm -hmm. Consistency mm -hmm. and discipline? I would say consistency, discipline, um, always leading with integrity. Um, and then I would also say like communicating within like a 48 hour time frame, um, with whoever it is, whether that's like a crew member who has a question or a need or, um, you know, an outside vendor, or just anything like communication within a 48 hour window to stay on top of everything. Um, I think those would be like the main, the main ones, the main ones. Yeah. Consistency, it's so, it, discipline, leading with integrity and communication. And, you know, so then you, you put it down to, you know, people that are working toward what, what you've achieved. It's the same thing. Uh, you know, I, I, I was really struck by something, um, by something last night. And, and, and I want to get your thoughts on this, you know, in, in my view, we're always creating, always. You're either creating opportunities, you're either creating um, a great environment, whatever, or you're creating the absolute opposite. But the way we're built, you're never not creating. You're either creating problems so good. or you are creating solutions. Right. What's mm -hmm. your thoughts? Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts on that? It's so interesting that you brought that up. We're, <laughs> it's going in and out again. Actually, Kristen, hold on. Hold geez. on. It's, hold on. It's so going in and out again. Passionate about. <laughs> Kristen, it's going in and out again. We're, can you see me? that topic. <laughs> um you know i wouldn't say that hold on I'm, hold on you can like go let me i hear you there we go it just must be something on my side <laughs> can you see me yeah <laughs> i can see you yeah we're traveling we're traveling was, together is this any that better was, that, i know that was such a great answer i was so good you know one thing about work your career wednesday you know we don't do a lot of editing so yeah. you guys are we don't need editing. Uh, we don't need editing. The raw. Yeah. Uh -uh. I mean, I, I'm like, Lord, help the Wi-Fi. Is this any better now? Can you hear me better? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I can hear you great. It's okay. it's going in and out. Perfect. In terms of... Perfect. Okay. So, 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 yeah. The question is, or the, you know, what are your thoughts on, um, on us consistently always create, cause we're, cause you, you know, you see all these things and, you know, mo motivational stuff and, you know, all over Instagram and, you know, mm -hmm. it's really great. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, you got to do this, you got to do that. Fact is you're always doing something. 
You're yeah. never not creating. 100%. And so what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. So I think there it's like a two prong piece for me. But one thing I will absolutely say is I, one of my greatest strengths is that I have a joy for problem solving. Like, mm. you know, anything can be, you can bring up pretty much anything. And I might, I might pull on other people's resources. I might not have the exact resource, but I will find it and I will help commit to, you know, a solution for, for, for something. Yeah. So I think that's also helped me advance so much in, in, in my career too, because I have found that there are a lot of people that would prefer to discuss the problem and ruminate over a problem over and over, <laughs> but are not really passionate passionate about getting to a solution. And for yeah. me, it's like, okay, I don't mind hearing, you know, what the what the situation is, but I want to cut to the chase and let's problem solve. You know, the the extra right. superfluous things don't matter. And I think that's been a big thing to try to engrave in the people that I, I work with is, hey, I'm passionate about solutions. If you're going to bring a problem to me, I'm looking for a solution. I'm not here to sit and talk about it. Let's move on and, and get to the next the next piece. And then two, the, the other part is, yeah, I totally believe that you're either creating, you know, a negative space or you are creating a positive, um, you know, a positive environment to to problem solve, to create, you know, good solutions to, you know, build sales or build, whatever you're building. You're either giving negative energy out or you're giving positive energy. And I always want to have a positive output. And I think that like people on my team know that. And like, we're all about solutions. We're all about positivity. And it's not that you're not going to have rough days. I'm not asking anyone to be fake, but I'm saying, hey, when you come in, commit to looking for a, you know, a positive solution. I love that. I absolutely love that. I was just, it, it occurred to me last night. I was just like, you know, I, I'm, I'm so tired of hearing it because it's presented in a way that says, you know, as if someone's not doing something or not creating. And the fact is- yes. You're creating all the time. We're never not in a in a in a in a, a space where we're not creating. Exactly. You know. So and and you know, so I had to ask you about that, particularly because you know you're creating um, environments. You're mm -hmm. you're creating. You're building people or mm -hmm. helping to rebuild them. Or just, you know, you know, it's it's all there to serve. Yes. Right? Yes. And, and, I, and I love that. It seems like that's sort of the ethos of Jersey Mike's. It really, and so Peter Kinkrow, you know, of course, the, the owner of Jersey Mike's <clears throat> corporate and just like the, I mean, just Jersey Mike's in general and like uh, giving out these opportunities to franchisees. It's been amazing learning from him over the last decade because, you know, he's a, you know, of a billionaire at this point, but he is so focused on the sandwich maker at, you know, in Concord, California, that mm -hmm. his focus is how can I make the lives better of those that work for me and how can, and, and carrying that over, how can I also give back in the community? You know, it's March right now. We're in, uh, can, can I, we can say what time frame it is, right? Um, I guess we're of going course. live. I, yeah. I'm saying it. Okay, well, cool. Well, okay. Well, this is good. Well, yeah, it's going to air tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. So we're, there you we're go. Perfect. So we're in, for example, March right now, which is our month of giving. It's a nationwide, um, you know, push that Peter Kinkro started, I think, gosh, almost a decade ago, if not over a decade ago. And we, you know, our co-ops pick a nonprofit and we raise money for that nonprofit uh, all month long. And then the last Wednesday of the month, every Jersey Mike's nationwide. So the franchisee gives, um, a hundred percent of their sales to that nonprofit. Oh, and so wow. that's a big, you know, that's a big number. That's like a whole day sales going to a nonprofit, but everyone lines up and is so joyful to do it, including my husband and I, we're, we're hoping we have big numbers on that Wednesday for both locations, because that's what, that's what this group is about. Like that's what this brand is about is not, yeah. Oh, we're here to give back. No, it's like in the right. actions, you know, through fundraising, through community efforts. What can we donate to? You know, during COVID, um, you know, we were encouraged to give out hundreds of, of sandwiches to to just different different groups that were on the front lines during COVID. I mean, when I say that this is a brand that truly puts action behind their words, 
it, it's just, there are so many real life examples of that. And that's why I got so passionate about this brand. It's like, not only do they have amazing subs. Yeah. But that's only a piece of it. The core, their mission statement and what they, they give and do. That's like my heart's desire. And to leave a legacy of giving back and, and being a servant leader, you know, at the end of the day, that's what I want. It's not mm. like, I'm not going to cure cancer. I'm not going to become the president. But if I have this realm of influence of, you know, a couple hundred employees and I can be a positive impact to say, hey, keep going and whatever your whatever thing is going on in your life, keep going. Or yeah. if you want to push forward, you can push forward into anything you want with discipline, with consistency, you know, whatever I and can integrity. help. And integrity. Exactly. There you go. Like, that's it's that's the, the kind of legacy the, I want to leave. It's the three. It's the it's the uh, the Trinity. Yes. Of, of oh, I like it. Really. A little again spiritual on it. I like it. <laughs> little Trinity in the business world. I mean, you know, and and I want to get to that. Um, you know, a, as you know, you know, we've talked to a lot of folks, and uh, a lot of you know highly successful, um, you know, much like yourself, um, people in the business world. And there's one constant that keeps it keeps coming up. Um, tell me, uh, in 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 all that you do, how important is a strong spiritual foundation? Great question. You know, it's such a good question. So I would be, you know, I'm in a secular industry. Definitely consider sure. a secular industry. And even um, even the my business partners, you know, have different uh, you know, different beliefs, different faith. Um, and I think we're all respectful of one another, although we don't agree. There, there's so much respect for one another. And I think yeah. what's been the most important for me is on the sales side, because I believe me, like humility is a big thing for me. I will always stay humble. Always. Um, I don't think anything good comes from being prideful. Uh, I will say though, like from the world's perspective in, in the position or, you know, I've been in, there have been some amazing sales growth, like moments in our group, you know, directly connected to the relationships I've formed and just the, um, the, the overall marketing plans that I've said, Hey, we're going to try to spearhead this and the success we've found through trying these, you know, slightly different avenues. It's, it's just created amazing growth for us. And I always, always give my success back to the Lord. And that's not, you know, yes, I'm putting work in, I'm trying hard, but I, before I go into any big meeting or any big relationship piece or anything, I always say, Lord, please bless this relationship. Please bless the communication. Um, I pray that you would help bring success. I pray you'd help bring sales growth, you know, whatever that is. And he has shown up time and time again in like some mind blowing ways of like, how did that happen for you? How did yeah. this store that's, you know, been months in the negatives, you've created these relationships and we're actually profiting now for months or, or for the year. I mean, it's, there's some crazy stories and yeah. I just go, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that this, that this happened. And I, in a very, I never want to be in someone's face, but I want people to know, I truly think my success is rooted in, is rooted in my faith and I will, and I will never discredit that. And so, yes, in answer to your question, a very long, long answer, faith is the biggest part of me. And so, yes, faith is a huge element in my success and in the position I'm in. And I'll, I'll always lead from a place of, of light and love and always trying to exhibit the Lord's light and love. I love that. Man, I don't want to. We're going to take one more break. Okay. Stick around, guys. That's fantastic. Uh, you know, if there's a takeaway there. You want to do it. You want to be successful. You want to to have this incredible journey. Do what successful people do. And uh, I have yet to hear one of them not say that they, that they have a strong spiritual foundation. Stay tuned. We have more to come with Chris Nappel. We'll be right back.
Attention lawyers, are you tired of wasting thousands of dollars in billboards, magazines, and more with little results? If so, we can help you save big. Did you know that a powerful video can be used on practically any platform and give you more clients than just one billboard alone? Visit our website at whitehuskyfilms.com. Call or text us today to receive a limited time offer. Take advantage of this one while it's here. It won't last long. Hey everybody, welcome back. Where did she go? I went, Coco, uh, where did she go? Uh, come here. There, you can't oh, get that's how it went. Oh, that's how it went. Oh, face. Oh, she's, she's beautiful. A, she's eight and a half months. She's a full dashing little wiener dog baby, and she's so Aww. sweet. She's my best friend. She knows she is. She's <laughs> trouble. She trouble. She trouble. Oh, yeah. Daddy says she trouble. I don't think she is. I don't. I think she's fine, <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> I I I go well, you know, with Shelby. I, I don't know where she is now. Is she under the desk? Uh, I, I am. Uh, she loves me. I yeah. do believe I'm a distant second, though, to Erica. A distant I, second. You know, you know what? Yeah, it makes sense. It happens. I, you know, I mean, she knows exactly the time, Erica. It's like she knows her schedule. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? Gets to a point. It's like, where's mom? Where's mom? Let's go. Let's go find. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. And uh, she knows the way the car sounds. She's, you know, she's very, very alert. So I, you know, I, I, I totally get. She is so beautiful. Thank you. Aww. I think so. I mean, I, I'm biased as all get out, but thank you. I think she is. <laughs> <laughs> I just, um, you know, I love your journey, um, and I love where you're going. It's just absolutely fantastic. The lives that you're touching. Um, it, you know, there's so many ripple effects. I was watching this documentary and it was, I mean, just, it was absolutely horrible, right? What, what happened to this guy? He was a football player and, and all this. And the person that, that did this, whatever it was to this football player, it had ripple effects mm -hmm. that reached years later to right now. You know, and it got me thinking is everybody, we all talk about the ripple effects that, um, you know, the positive ripples. Oh, yes, it's going to ripple and reverberate. Well, so does the other thing. And it's so important. I mean, so incredibly important to know that and operate in integrity and have those ripple effects be the absolute best they possibly can be. Both, both will be felt. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. so what do you want it's not even about legacy it's about you know whoever's going to watch this show right what's the ripple effect going to be you know it's probably I, I i'm hoping that they you know people will look at it and say okay i there there are my three consistency discipline and integrity that's really what you need in this world mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to keep going when we're feeling so down and so like you know I just can't. Yes, you can. Si se puede. Yeah. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You have to. Not because of you, but because of the ripple <coughs> that yes. you're going to leave. Yes. You know? And I love the fact that, you know, with Jersey Mike's, it just seems, I mean, you've been there so long, it, you know, it seems like such a great marriage of, you know, mm -hmm. of mission and, and you know, what you guys are trying to do and not trying to do what you guys are doing. And I wish, uh, at some point, uh, part of that doing would be coming to Houston. Hey, never say never, never say never. I'm, I'm not I, I love never. Texas. I'm just saying, you know, I don't ah, know. Maybe we hey. need to talk. I'd like to have. It. Yeah. Okay. There we go. <laughs> it's just so wonderful. Now, where are your stores? Yeah. So, okay. The, the, the group that I bought in with, we have 18 Jersey Mike's locations. Currently our 19th is opening up in three weeks. We oh, just had an opening. A week, we just had an opening a week ago. So we are popping them out like triplets. We're like, boom, boom, boom. Um, so we have <laughs> 18 right now, nine of them are in um, Inland Empire, okay. Riverside County area. And then nine of them are in the Treasure Valley area, um, uh, all surrounding Boise, Idaho. Oh and, you know, that was a whole, I mean, and the story, we could have a whole hour podcast just on all, 
the effort it took to create the brand in Idaho starting eight, nine years ago, they, people didn't know what Jersey Mike's was in Idaho. There, right. there weren't Californians out there yet when we started. And that was a bloody battle trying to to have the community understand like what we were about, what our mission is like, you know, these, these, they're such sweet people, but they're like, you guys are New Jersey. Like, you know, we're from Idaho. It just, it was not, we were not connecting. I was banging my head against a wall there for a while. And we tried a lot of different things. Again, it's that same mindset. I said, I won't give up. I'm going to stay consistent. Right. I'm going to stay disciplined. We're going to have to try some different tactics that, you know, that, that we haven't done in California. And I'm telling you about like two, it was like a painful two years, but about a little after that two year mark, um, we just started to turn a corner. Like people started connecting. We were in, we were doing so many different community events. Um, and we, we still do that. We're connecting with the city. We love, you know, we love to know the mayor. We love to know the public information. We like to know all, all these different people and like figure out how we can, how we can embed in well. And we finally clicked there and we skyrocketed. Like after that, it's been like off to the races for all those locations. So we have the, the nine there soon to be 10. Um, and then we have the the two Mountain Mike's pizzas also out, out there in Idaho as well. And then my wow. husband and I separately, you know, fully own two two Jersey Mike's uh, right now. One of them being in Fallbrook, where we reside, Fallbrook, California. That is c- technically San Diego County. And then in Alpine, California as well. Oh um, gosh, these beautiful so mountains cool. out there. So it's, it's a lot of oh. fun. We're spread out. Lots of driving, but it's fine. Lots of driving, <laughs> lots of flying. Yeah, lots, lots of flying, lots you of know, driving. Lots of, yep. <laughs> lots of frequent flyer miles. Uh-huh. Racking up the points. Racking up the points. I absolutely love that. I, I love that. And I think you guys are just going to continue to grow and continue to really make an impact on the community. Again, you know, it's like, um, you know, we're, we're, you know, we talk about sales. It's less about the product, again, and more about what, you're doing, you know, money flows to value. Uh, mm-hmm. We had Clara mm-hmm. Capano on um, a couple weeks ago. And, she, you know, I, I love that economic law. Money flows to value. <laughs> and so, I love that. you know, what you guys are offering is so valuable that, uh, you know, it sometimes it does take time, particularly in that part of the world where, oh yes, you know, there are, you know, a lot of brands that have been there a long time. Well, sorry, I'm getting choked up thinking about it. <laughs> oh, there we go. So I'm thinking a tickle in my throat and then it goes, sorry, give me one second here. <laughs> Do you ever have that happen? That's like my biggest fear has been on a podcast and getting choked up and my fear is happening right now, but we're going to get right through it. Okay, I'm alive. Please it's so, repeat well, that part. Well, no, in particularly in that <clears throat> part of the world, or in or in a part of the world that uh, you know has had longtime brands, and they're and yes, they're they're deep rooted in the community. Either someone started that business mm-hmm. there, and it's a family business, and it blah 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 blah. Mm-hmm. But you know, so have someone come in that's an outsider. Oh yeah. But, but, you know, having to prove that they, they really do love the community and yes. that, uh, it, you know, I, 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 I'm good. I, I, I you know, I want to help yes. build the community too. <laughs> right. And right. Finally, it, you know, and finally it happens. And I think, I think with a lot of businesses that, that go through that, it's like anything else you're, you're, are, what are you here for? Mm-hmm. You know, are you mm-hmm. here for, a long time or are you here for yep. a short time? Short time. Um, uh-huh. we, uh, I like, you know, Pitbull talks, talking about, we want, we don't want to, uh, what, what is it? Uh, we want to slow and for show. Yes. Yes. You know, and what, one of my uh, girlfriends says, you know, we're, we're here for a fun time, not a long time. And I think you have to kind of define like where, where we're at with that too, because there we go. There's the dogs. There you go, guys. Um, I think that there's such a, you, I think this is transcends all businesses. Like, what is your mission? Like if your mission is to get in, make a dollar and get out, that's what you're going to output. Like, and people will, people will see that, you know, you might, and you might have a great business, but that's what you're there for. I think maybe, 
You know, maybe, maybe. I, I, I think you know, the most I, successful businesses go, I want to, I want to create an opportunity for people. So I want to create an right. opportunity for employees where they feel valued, where they can make money for their families and for their futures. And right. we care about the customers. We, we, we want to love on our customers. So if you care right. about the people that work for you and you care about your customers, the rest is going to flow from that. Like the, su the, the success will be just a byproduct. And I think that's big to me is that our whole ownership group. And then my husband and I as individual owners, that, that has to stay at the, the at the, you know, the, that's the biggest focus and highlight for us is we cannot break away from that care for our people, care for our customers, and then taking it even a step further for my husband and I, and then leave it, you know, Christ centered um in our business and that that is if if we shy away from uh, any of those three then we're not operating in our highest potential and i think that that's you know no matter what kind of growth comes our way you know whether we stick with the two or maybe we're blessed with more that has to stay at the core of who we are or we're not doing it for the right reason thousand percent thousand percent kristen you are incredible and you got, you're doing great things and I'm so proud of you. I am so proud Thank of you. you. It's I, it, this will continue to grow. It will continue to flourish. And, uh, there is no doubt in my mind that, uh, you're going to come to Houston. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm about to make a date and then I'll have to come on as like a, uh, like a cameo appearance out there. Like we can be sitting together oh. with Shelby and Coco and they can yes. do the little, little puppy friend thing. I oh gosh, it. that would be so great. Little puppy yeah. play time. You know, you know what? We could do like on location uh, shows at Jersey Mike's. <gasps> That'd be what? so cool. Don't tempt me with a good time. Also, well, if you ever come out this way, we can set up yeah. one of our Jersey Mike's too. That'd be really fun. So I'm just well, super out. Well, ESPN, you know, there's different radio stations that'll set up at like a pub. You know what yes, I mean? Yes. We're going to do that with Work Your Career Wednesday. May even do it with extra. That'd be awesome. That would be very fun. Hey, keep me in the loop. <laughs> I've, I have had the most fun. Like, thank you for just letting me share from my heart. Thank you for being real. I know we had some Wi Fi, like connection issues. We got the dogs talking, but it's like real life. So I That's right. thoroughly enjoyed what we did today. And I just want to say you're an inspiration to me that you have created this podcast to, you know, just create awareness and help encourage people in their careers. And so I am just praying that this continues to grow and gain so much momentum because what you're doing is, is invaluable here. My, wow. My heart is full. Thank you so much. Yeah. Good. We're going to, it's going to be great. Yes, I'm it so, is. I'm almost speechless. One, almost speechless. one, one, one episode at a time. One season at a time. Amen, amen. Kristen, I love you so much, um, and thanks for coming on. You are, uh, you're just an inspiration all the way around, and uh, yeah, I think you're going to get a lot of fans trying to hit you up pretty soon. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I don't even know what I would do with a fan base. Oh my gosh. I don't need oh. that, but I just had the best time. <laughs> Everybody really hope you enjoyed today's show. Um, I know I did. And, uh, and uh, all I got to say is for everybody at uh, white Husky films, um, Jane's physical therapy, a lot of people that are hitching their wagon to us and Kristen Appel and you know go check out Jersey Mike's too they are yes. phenomenal absolutely phenomenal eats but uh they're doing something that's uncommon and you can taste that in every sub so go go to a Jersey Mike's at one near you with that got to tell you this that I love you and for love everyone you. I I love you and God bless you. And let his face shine upon you, give you great peace, be excellent to yourself and each other, and go get a sub. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. We'll see you next Bye. week. Bye. Bye. Sounds good. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. Hey, if you like Work Your Career Wednesday and want to be notified every single time we have a new episode, like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell, smash it, 
Get a hammer and get it and... Oh, oh. Yeah, that's fine. Too much? No, that's fine. Are you sure? Yeah, I love it. People like Do you hear Steven in the background? I was just making sure I'm going to be okay. Yeah. But get that notification going! And hey, we will be letting you know, or I guess YouTube will be letting you know, when the next Worker Career Wednesday is on. So make sure you like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Man, ding it, ring it, sling it, and bo bang it. All right? And we will see you soon. Worker Career Wednesday. Oh, great. I'm glad you stopped by. Be sure to get that subscription bell, and I'll see you there.